Yeah, so welcome to today's presentation about the important ideas of my favorite Austrian, Gregor Mendel. Yeah, we must talk in silly accent. No, I think I have to stop. Anyway, today's uh, ideas are about uh, Mendelian genetics. This is objective 8.2. Uh, some of the different important vocabulary that you need to be able to use to move on to the next step in our genetics unit about uh, doing Punnett squares and things along those lines. So just some silly images. My favorite is the uh, now kiss in the middle, but uh, just some silly images here for you to use. So let's start off at the beginning. When Mendel started working with his peas, he looked at all different kinds of traits. And again, a trait is any physical characteristic. We've already talked about what that word means. So the different seven traits that he looked at was the height of the plant, tall versus short, plump versus wrinkled peas, or the pods themselves, whether you could see the peas inside or not, uh, the shape of the pea, was it round or wrinkled, the color of the pea itself, green or yellow, the color of the pod itself, green or yellow, and uh, the uh, white versus purple flower. There's a seventh trait not shown in here, but kind of the location of the flowers, whether it was at the ends of the branches or along the stem. So in order to talk about these things, these are different traits. He said they were each governed by two different factors. We have some different language uh, to use about these at this point. So word number one is this lovely term up here. Uh, it's the term genes. A gene is a section of DNA that codes for a trait. So a gene is simply DNA, some little piece that codes for a trait of some sort. And that's kind of the important idea. So we know if we've got different traits here, these right here are all of our traits. We know we have some different genes that are involved with that. Now if you take a look at this closely, each one of these different traits has two different versions, right? There is green versus yellow, different green versus yellow, white versus purple. These two different versions are this word up here, alleles. A-L-L-E-L-E, -L -L -E, pardon my lovely handwriting. Alleles are different versions of a gene. So we have a gene for plant height, and then we have two different appearances of that gene. We have a tall gene and a short gene, if you want to think of it that way. And each of those different traits is one gene. Each different version of that trait is an allele. So when we think about the shape or the color of the pea, there's two different alleles for each one of those. Plump versus wrinkled are two alleles. Round versus wrinkled would be two alleles for uh, the shape of the P. Uh, each of these things combine into this term, and this is the term called phenotype. Phenotype is a very complex sounding word for what something looks like. It's hard to write and talk at the same time. Phenotype is simply the genetic way of saying what's something's appearance. So if we think about our two pea plants up here at the top, we've got this one up here, this big tall one. It's got a phenotype of being tall. Now it may have some different combinations of genes or different alleles that are combining for that, but its phenotype is tall. The one next to it, this one right here, its phenotype is short. When we take a look at our other uh, things down below here, uh, our different peas, all this kind of stuff, um, these guys down at the bottom, these right here, those are a phenotype. The one on this side over here has a phenotype of being plump, and this one over here has a phenotype of being wrinkled. It is possible to have alleles that, that you may not see, and I'll get to that in a second. So phenotype is what you look like on the outside. When Mendel started looking at this, this little graphic over here is supposed to kind of take a look at uh, two different colors of peas. So we've got the green ones over here uh, crossed with yellow ones over here. And when he crossed those two together, like we see in this top one, we found that when we cross these guys, I'm going to put the X there to say that we're mating those two, because they don't really have sex, it's not the same thing. But when we cross those together, that next generation was all yellow. Kind of odd, not exactly what he expected at all. You'd expect the green ones would be more common. But in this particular case, when he took green pea plants, a phenotype of green, and crossed them with the plants that had a phenotype of yellow, in that next generation, all yellow showed up. By definition, we now call that dominant. That's a dominant phenotype. So when you cross two different uh, phenotypes together, the one that appears in the next generation is called dominant. The one that hides is we call that recessive. So in this particular case, this one right here, this green one, has a phenotype, right? Phenotype of green. Phenotype equals green. But 
we also now know in this case that the phenotype of green is recessive, or that green allele is recessive to the yellow allele. The yellow one beats up and wins. This brings up to a next bit. This next language here is the language called genotype. What a genotype is, is a way of expressing which sorts of genes these plants actually have. So our top one up here, our green plant, our lovely one up at the top, this one right here, we know that that one has pretty much green, green, green all the way through. This yellow one here has yellow, yellow, yellow all the way through. How do we know that? Because that's how the plants were bred. But these ones, this next generation, is called the F1 generation, these are not pure green or pure yellow. They're actually a hybrid, even though only one shows. One mom or one parent was green or one parent was yellow. So these guys in the middle actually have kind of a hybrid genotype. They're not pure. They have one green gene came from this parent and one yellow gene came from that parent. Same thing. This particular plant over here has one green gene from here and one yellow gene from here. So that's their genotype. It's the genes underneath. And genotypes relate to phenotypes because what you look like on the outside is certainly going to determine what you look like on the inside. Finally, these two words down at the bottom, frightening looking words, don't stress about them too much, are these terms homozygous and heterozygous. These are the terms that we use to describe genotypes. Homozygous and heterozygous do not refer to phenotypes, they refer to genotypes. So we could say that this green plant, so that's supposed to be a lowercase g over here, and this yellow plant, kind of weird if we put it that way, both breed together. These guys down here, this middle section, these ones, the F1s, have one of each. They got one little G from mom and one big G from dad, however you want to do it. These guys, this particular look right here, sorry, is what we would call heterozygous. Hetero means different. The term homo, like homozygous over here means same, heterozygous here means different. Our two parents, that one, and that one were both homozygous or pure breeding. So the one on the left was homozygous for green, the one on the right was homozygous for yellow, and the ones in the middle, one of each, are what we would call heterozygous. Again, homozygous, heterozygous, keywords to be able to use. A couple things to clarify here. The words dominant and recessive do have some kind of connotations to us. And it's really important to realize that the term dominant does not mean that something's normal, that it's common, good, right, healthy, uh, the regular way. Um, these little cartoons in here all show some dominant and recessive traits. The one on the left is all dominant. If you look really, really closely, I know the letters are kind of tiny. We can look at bent little finger down here at the bottom. You can see there's a difference. See those letters down at the bottom right here? Here's the little ones right here. Those letters right there. You can kind of see genotypes that go along with phenotypes. No peak or widow's peak are phenotypes. And it's not like one is good or bad. It doesn't matter whether you have a widow's peak or no peak or blue eyes or brown eyes. Neither one of them is normal. It simply means that when you have a dominant trait and a recessive trait together, like big E, little e, big C, little c, big L, little l, when you have one of each of those, it's going to look like the dominant trait. So in the top one up here, when we're talking about hair, dark hair is dominant to light hair. And in order to look like you have light hair, you have to have two of the recessive genes. In order to have dark hair, as long as you have one dominant gene, you'll have that dominant appearance. Same thing with curly hair, same thing with whether or not you curl your tongue. It certainly doesn't mean that curling your tongue is normal or right, or that having brown eyes is correct and having blue eyes is faulty. It's just the way the genes get passed on. So again, dominant simply means that it shows. Recessive means that it hides, unless it's got two of the same. Last two comments about uh, our friend Mendel. Here is an example of the combination of what happens when you breed two plants together. Here's your original breeding right here. We have a tall plant and we have a short plant. You can see right here there is a phenotype. Phenotype equals tall and there's a genotype. The genotype in this case is big T. Big T has two dominant genes. We would call that homozygous. So in that particular case, the short pea plant, its phenotype is short, its genotype is little t, little t, and it's also homozygous. So these are the parents. When you bred those together, he had the second generation. So this is generation one. Here's generation two. 
And when he bred these two together, tall plants crossed with short plants, we see that this middle generation of plants here is certainly not tall and short. The middle generation of plants here, these guys, all tall in terms of their phenotypes. Why is that? Because each one of them, when you look down at the bottom down here, is heterozygous. There's a big T and little t. And when you have a heterozygous genotype, we know that the big T is going to show because it's dominant and the little t is going to hide because it's recessive. So in this case, tall is the one that shows. And then over here, this last one, this generation three at the very end, these guys, we see we have a mix again, three tall plants and one short plant. How does this relate to this idea of the principle of segregation? Segregation is actually a relatively straightforward idea here. Segregation simply says that only one gene can be passed on. In other words, this parent, the tall parent, didn't pass on both of these to the next generation. The next generation isn't this. That would be if we had both of them combined. That doesn't make sense. It's not that at all. What segregation means, and we, we know this because we've talked about this quite a bit, you know, through your education, that only one or the other is going to get passed on. Either that big T or that big T, but not both. Same thing, that one and that one. So these parents, or these uh, offsprings right here with the big T, little t, that means they're getting one of each. One from mom, or from the tall one, and the other one, you got one from the short the parents anyway. So again, they only pass along one. And the reason why we got these four different types over here is due to that principle of segregation. Only one will get passed on from each of these medium plants here, or these tall plants in the middle. Um, and we'll learn a, a trick to figure out how to do this. It's called a Punnett square. Last rule. So principle of segregation. Only one gets passed on. Is the principle of independent assortment. It sounds really scary. It's really not. We only talk about independent assortment when there's two different traits. So we have two different traits here. We have um, one is for uh, pea pods, the outside is being yellow or green, and then one is for the peas themselves, the seeds being yellow or green. And what this means when you're talking about independent assortment, assortment is that the two traits, um, when they get passed on to each uh, to the next generation, they're not stuck together. Um, that they can separate independently uh, from each other. Uh, if I could write, wow, that's supposed to be the word each. Yikes. Sorry. Each other. So down here in this bottom one, we can see that even though the original parents had green pods and yellow seeds or something else, that there's all different kinds. Yes, yeah, some of the offspring here have green and yellow, but some of them don't look like their parent. Like this one right here is green and green. That parent wasn't green and green. Uh, there's a couple other ones. Yellow and yellow. That certainly doesn't look like this parent, or the other parent that's up at the top here. Or uh, yellow and green, that didn't show up either. So one of the tricks of inheritance is that when you have two different traits, that they're not related. In other words, like the color of your hair does not relate to the color of your eyes, and vice versa. They can be separated independently from one another. So there you go. There's the major terms that you need to know about Mendelian genetics. There's lots of words in here. I really suggest you go and watch this one one more time. See you in class tomorrow.